Hi, this is Dave Clark and you're watching EQTV. Graphic actor with my name. Oh, I thought that was a secret. All of these same people have the exact same name as you. Who is Dave Clark? Who is Dave Clark? You. Obviously, not the owner of Soma, but the others. You never know. You know, I mean, I've known the guys for ages, but everyone gets me confused with Soma because of the same name. And that's always a bit strange. Like, I, I sometimes I get emails for like really, really expensive bills. And I'll just pass it on to the other Dave Clark, because it's obviously not me. Um, but I've known these guys for maybe 15 or 20 years on and off. And uh, the relationship didn't start up too well, because uh, Music Magazine uh, uh, was trying to start some sort of argument between us. I don't know why. It's it really weird. Uh, it's when Push had left being editor. And then it was like, yeah, well, Dave Clark hates so much. I was like, well, no, I don't. And um, but they're, they're really personal, personable human beings, uh, really good-hearted, and uh, I'm so happy that they're still successful up here. Like Scotland and Ireland seem to be the last bastions of these islands where good dance music can actually proliferate. Um, when you go down south, there's a few little niches like Fabric in London where they still care about really good quality dance music, but a lot of places have just sold their soul and they just won't book good quality dance music, they'll just book cheesy stuff. Uh, and there's, I have a lot of reasons behind that, which is quite well known. I have a lot of theories behind it, but England doesn't really concern me anymore in that way. I live in Amsterdam now, and my life is a lot happier for it. What are the TVs is it? What the TVs you have for them to have such cheesy? Well, it's led by Radio One, and Radio One, ever since John Peel died, doesn't really have anyone that champions music that might be a little bit left field or a little bit challenging. It doesn't have anyone that champions that stuff anymore. left school I was supposed to do computer software engineering but because my parents didn't have any money I didn't have any money I ran away and ended up in a shoe shop um, working for a shoe shop and then working in a clothes shop and then sleeping rough for a while um, and then luckily I got onto where I was but if that didn't work out that way maybe I would have been doing computer software engineering it's one of those questions you will never know unless you happen to be privy to parallel universe in sort of like information so Well, see, this is a misconception. It's like, you say it's the high life. The only point of the high life is actually the performance, is the DJ, is the work. And of course, seeing some friends, that's too, that can be very nice. But coming in from Paris, 
having to take everything out of your bag, watching a guy before you actually almost ending up in a fist fight with the security in Paris, an old guy like about 60 because he was being abused, and he was abusive back, and then sitting on the plane, not sleeping, almost missing the plane because the taxi didn't come, getting on the plane, sleeping like that for half an hour, then landing in Edinburgh, then getting in a van, sleeping in the van, wrapping your arms in the seatbelt for 45 minutes. That's not really the high life, is it? This is the high life here. Is it worth it? Yeah, I mean, definitely it's worth it. Otherwise, you know, it's, it's, it's not worth doing. But it's not, it's not like walking around like on, on rose petals with, with champagne being thrown at you. And I wouldn't want that anyway. But uh, when, you, when you perform to an audience that understands your music... Then, then, then it's all worthwhile. Well, it's nice. I mean, I've actually never worked with anyone in the studio before. And so it actually was quite a lonely experience without realising it because I did actually everything from the soldering to wiring it all up. Um, you know, I, I had some collaborations on my last album, but everything was done by, m by myself with, except for the vocals or some of the song structure on my last album. But this is the first time I actually worked with someone in a studio and that's actually quite nice. Um, so that, that's, that's kind of fun. And how does that um, inspire you in a different way? Yeah, because you think of things in a different way and you don't always have to be the one that thinks of everything. And then you can have someone else's thought and actually put your own thoughts on that and they can do the same to you. And that's actually quite nice. And it feels good. I actually trust the technology now as well. Five years ago, I wasn't convinced about the technology where it was heading, but now I am. And it's a lot more reliable and it's really, really good. So what's changed about the technology? Uh, the power of the computers. Uh, five years ago, they were powerful, but not like what they are now where you can run most of the stuff and the, the, your CPU is only at 10 or 12% even if you're running 80 plugins. Whereas before you'd have to load the plugin, then it will crash. And uh, now it's just reliable. Uh, I've got some remixes that are going to be coming out. I've remixed um, with a guy called Mr. Jones. Uh, we're together called Unsubscribe. Uh, we've remixed Black Asteroid, uh, which is a new track from Brian Black, who's from Mota. And that's coming out in CLR. That should be out soon, I think. I'm not sure. Remix Detroit Grand Pooper Sandwiches. And uh, we've also finished a remix, two remixes for Ben Sims. And uh, just talking to Tigra about remixing maybe Gestefferstein too. Um, and then uh, I've got a compilation CD that's going to be coming out in October but I don't know if I'm allowed to talk about who it is for yet so... Yeah. 